You want thingamabobs? I got 20. But who cares? No big deal. I want more. Today we're going to talk about The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid is one of the classic Disney princesses where we've got a boy crazy teenager who's hit puberty and fixates on a human boy. A man, probably. She's obsessed with Prince Eric and wants to be a human because she has fallen in love with this guy even though she's never spoken to him once. Right? It's classic Disney romance. In Ariel's journey, we watch her become obsessed with human culture and I actually really love this part of the story. Ariel collects these little random things that she has no idea what they're for. Like she just thinks they're so fascinating and has such an appreciation for another culture. Ariel's like adventurous spirit and her like obsession with understanding the human world to me actually speaks of and something that we identify with on a deep level as humanity, our desire to understand what's beyond the veil, what's beyond this world. We know there's more and we're so intrigued. Like, there's evidence, there's hints all over the place of something else going on. And Ariel is just collecting all the data that she can and just trying to like hold onto it and treasure it and meditate on it because she knows there's more than this and she wants to experience it. And then, you know, the day comes where she finds a ship and she's up there and she's watching him. She's just mesmerized and she can't let it go because she's found a world beyond her own. Ariel represents in her world and in the story, someone who knows there's more than what they see and wants to go for it wants to experience and apprehend the beyond what's here, what's now. Not just settle for what's comfortable and familiar. She wants to take territory and take ground and expand and grow. I love that about Ariel. It's so entrepreneurial. It's so pioneering and adventurous and brave and bold. So um, obviously we see her collecting all the human stuff and just having such a funny interaction with what she thinks these things are for. Such an ignorant, hilarious like relationship with all these artifacts that are just, you know, junk. Um, and then it's really interesting to observe, but um, Sebastian in this story is a counselor to Ariel. This crab is so riddled with fear and anxiety, it's like super stressful to watch him consistently try and influence every situation he's a part of. He's constantly like anticipating the worst and trying to re limit, restrict, and control everyone around him to make sure that we don't make a mess and people don't get hurt. Um, he might seem like the voice of reason, but actually in Ariel's story, he's only the voice of fear. He's just constantly trying to hold her back and keep her from living her life and exploring that thing inside her that she has to get after. And Ariel actually advances in her story in spite of Sebastian's counsel. Be mindful of the counselors you keep, you guys. Just because they have experience or years or letters behind their name or whatever doesn't mean that they have a right to speak into your life. You want to discern the spirit behind where your counselors are coming from and you want to follow the people that have love and truth and hope and abundance and the good stuff coming from their life. If you wouldn't trade places with them, don't listen to them. You want people who bear fruit to be the ones that are speaking into your life and helping produce things, okay? And then there's this dark moment. I actually use this example in my Discerning Spirits course that I teach, where Ariel, she wants to be a human. Her dad is obviously very against this whole thing. He shoots her Eric statue idol thing with his trident right and blows it up and just ruins her life, right? So she leaves distraught and just so rejected by her dad, misunderstood. And she goes to Ursula, the sea witch, to get legs. She's like, listen, maybe she'll get me what I want. So she goes to Ursula and is like, hey, I want, I want to meet this guy. I need legs. And she's like, great, I can give that to you. Here's the thing, it's going to cost you some stuff. First of all, um, you have three days to kiss this dude. It needs to be the kiss of true love. And if you do, within this three-day period, then you'll remain human forever. But if you don't, if you fail in this time frame, you turn back into a mermaid and you belong to me. Oh, by the way, in order for us to do this transaction, you're also gonna have to give up your voice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that. So Ariel's like, what the heck? How am I supposed to? She's like, oh, you can work it out. And she just kind of overpowers and just bullies this girl into signing her life away, right? So then she does the spell and pulls Ariel's voice out of her face and puts it in a shell and sends her off as a human. Um, in this scenario, this is actually a really dark scene in Disney history, and they've got a few of them. But Ariel goes to a witch to do some trading in the black market, to violate her own nature as a creature, as a being, to give up her own voice, to remove the authority that she possesses as a princess of the ocean and gives it away so she can go get this little tryst with this human that she wants to just go chase after the lusts of the flesh. I wish I hadn't said that. So she goes back doors and 
you know, gets what she wants outside of the way things are meant to be done. She goes like to the dark place and trades with the devil. And then we obviously watch that whole thing play out. Um, one thing you guys want to be aware of though is what, what Ariel's doing in a pretty overt, obvious place with Ursula is something that we all do on a regular basis. There are things, spirits come to us and they tell us, hey, you can't do that or you need to do this or this has to happen in your life or you need to act like this or say that thing or don't say that or whatever. And when we agree with those influences in our life, we actually are casting a lot with them and giving them something of ours in order to gain whatever perceived benefit we think they're bringing to us. Um, this is called an agreement in the spirit world and we do it all the time. When you do this with the enemy, when you do that with evil, evil is giving you a perceived benefit, but all the while actually stealing from you behind your back and sabotaging your ability to properly influence the world that you live in. They take our voice, they blind our eyes, they use us as their own minions to do their bidding and suck the life out of us so that they can actually release their own influence in the world because they can't do it on their own. They need us. Anyway, so Ariel's doing that with Ursula, right? She goes all manner of hell breaks out. She, you know, they have to fight and people die and whatever. Um, the crazy thing is, you guys, Ariel turns back into a mermaid because she didn't pull it off. And at the end of the, of the movie, her dad, having compassion and realizing that she's not just on some weird like girl crush, she's actually in love with this guy. He points his trident towards her and turns her into a human. Her dad could have changed her into a human this whole time. She had access to that and it was always available. But because of her own rebellion and the inner turmoil and the misunderstanding and disconnection of their relationship, she had to go somewhere else to get what she wanted when she always had access to it this whole time. And the proper way for her to go about this thing playing out in her life was to go to her dad, to be in proper submission and follow the authority that she was under and let him be the one to bless her and release her if that was what he chose. And obviously they could work that out in their relationship, but there was such misunderstanding. They both were just fighting for their own perspective on this that, you know, she ended up just going another way. We like to do that sometimes. I know you don't like to do that. Sometimes other people like to go find other ways to get results in their life instead of waiting on God, instead of listening to him and doing things according to his path and way and nature. We try to find other things. And the Bible is actually full of other examples of people doing that as well. Abraham's a pretty big example, right? He was told that he's going to have a kid and from that kid, the whole world will be blessed. But his wife is barren and can't bear kids. And God said that she would and it just wasn't happening. So he takes her slave girl or handmaiden or whatever. And her wife's like, maybe do have a kid with her. And so he has a baby with Hagar, right? And that's where Ishmael comes from and all that. That whole thing was Abraham's way of trying to get God's promise to happen without God. And we see that constantly throughout scripture, people constantly trying to get things to happen without the Lord because they're trying to accomplish what he said would take place. The right thing to do here, you guys, in our life is to wait on the Lord, to submit to his nature, to his plans, his timing, to what he wants and follow in his ways, no matter what it costs us. Because when we do that, he actually meets us there and guides us along the way and abundance and overcoming and beautiful, whatever, all these amazing things pop out of us and produce all around us from that proper alignment with who he is. When we go outside of him and we try and find solutions and answers apart from God in our lives, we don't not only miss out on what could have been, but whatever solution we are getting is actually sabotaging our lives. So a big lesson we can learn from Ariel is just because you can get it somewhere else doesn't mean that you should. It actually brings a lot of destruction and chaos and sabotages your life, steals from you and makes you have to go through great lengths to just get back to square one. It's not worth it. And let's say we did do that, you guys. God is good. He's better than the enemy could possibly be at sabotaging your life. So he takes anything that happens and makes it your benefit. But that's like the safety net. That's plan B. The beautiful thing that is available to us is to follow what the Lord is doing. We can get to a place in our lives where we're actually mature enough to know him. We're familiar and intimate with him to the point where we can actually follow him along the way and not have to do this, God, would you fix this scenario anymore? We can actually grow to the place where we walk with him and we're in victory on a regular basis as a lifestyle. Um, so you guys, don't go to the enemy. Don't, don't go to evil. Don't go to the witches to get your answers. Your dad loves you and he will take care of you and he'll bring everything in your heart to pass as you continue to say yes to who he is and what he's doing. And remember guys, when you're watching a movie, you're never alone. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, hit that bell button so you can get um, notifications of the next videos that we're going to do. If you want to subscribe to the channel, you can click here. If you want to understand more about trading in the spirit, you can find out more information by clicking on this video.